Welcome to Who Died Today America, your daily source for remembering and honoring the lives of those who have passed and the legacies of the most notable personalities. Chuck Morris, a legacy of rhythm and resilience. The music world mourns the tragic loss of Lotus percussionist Chuck Morris and his 20-year-old son Charlie, whose bodies were found after they went missing on a kayaking trip in the Ozark Mountains. As a founding member of the renowned instrumental and electronic music group Lotus, Chuck Morris leaves behind a rich musical legacy that will continue to inspire and captivate fans around the globe. Formed in the 1990s, Lotus carved a unique niche in the music scene with their innovative blend of electronic and instrumental sounds. Their live performances were known for their energy and immersive experiences, drawing in fans from diverse backgrounds. As the band's percussionist, he played a vital role in shaping Lotus's distinctive sound, creating intricate rhythms that elevated the group's music and captivated audiences. Despite the devastating loss, Lotus and the Morris family have chosen to honour the lives of Chuck and Charlie by celebrating their memories and the impact they had on so many people. The band plans to hold a series of benefit shows to support the Morris family, taking place in Denver, Colorado, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania and Port Chester, New York. These concerts will not only serve as a testament to his lasting influence on the music world, but also as an opportunity for fans to come together in solidarity and remembrance. Throughout his career, Chuck Morris made a significant contribution to the world of music, influencing countless musicians and fans alike with his talent, passion and dedication to his craft. His work with Lotus will forever stand as a testament to his incredible ability to create captivating rhythms and unforgettable live experiences. As we reflect on the life and legacy of Chuck, we pay tribute to a remarkable musician and a loving father, whose memory will live on through the music he created and the lives he touched. Tributes to Chuck Morris. Soap opera legend Elizabeth Hubbard, known for her iconic roles in As the World Turns and The Doctors, passed away at the age of 89. With a career spanning over five decades, Hubbard was an 11-time Daytime Emmy nominee, winning twice for her performances as Dr. Althea Davis and Edith Wilson in First Lady's Diaries. Born in New York City on December 22, 1933, Hubbard attended Radcliffe College and the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in London. She made her soap debut in 1962 as Anne Fletcher in Guiding Light, later taking on roles in The Edge of Night and The Doctors. As Dr. Althea Davis, she appeared in over 2,700 episodes from 1964 until the show's cancellation in 1982. She joined As the World Turns in 1984, bringing to life the character of Lucinda Walsh, a powerful businesswoman and devoted mother. Over the years, she received eight Daytime Emmy nominations for her portrayal of Walsh. Hubbard also appeared in Anacostia as Eva Montgomery in 2016. Beyond her soap opera work, her film credits include The Bell Jar, 1979, and Ordinary People, 1980. She was the recipient of a 1965 Clarence Derwent Award for Best Supporting Female and a 2015 Gold Derby TV Lifetime Achievement Award. Martha Byrne, who played her on-screen daughter Lily on As the World Turns, paid tribute to the late actress on Instagram, highlighting her dedication to truth and honesty in her performances. In a 2015 interview with Soap Opera Digest, she expressed her love and gratitude for her fans, stating, I love them and I mean that. They're in my heart. Let the fans know that I love them and honour them, and I still look at the poems I sent them. Elizabeth Hubbard is survived by her son Jeremy Bennett, who confirmed her passing in a heartfelt Facebook post. Tributes to Elizabeth Hubbard. Al Jaffe, celebrating a century of laughter and legendary artistry. The world of humour and cartooning bids a fond farewell to Al Jaffe, a legendary Mad Magazine cartoonist who, at the age of 100, has left an indelible mark on the industry. Best known for his iconic back page fold in and the running feature Snappy Answers to Stupid Questions, his creativity, wit, and ingenuity have spanned generations and inspired countless cartoonists. 
Born in 1921, Jaffe began his career in 1942 with Joker Comics and worked continuously until his retirement in 2020. His innovative spirit led him to foresee ideas such as the multi-bladed razor and the autocorrect function, which were later brought to life in his uniquely humorous and satirical style. With a career spanning an incredible 78 years, Jaffe was awarded the Guinness World Record for the longest career as a comic artist in 2016. Throughout his time with Mad Magazine, he made significant contributions to the publication, including over 450 fold-ins and countless features that showcased his endless well of ideas. Fellow cartoonists have often praised his work for its variety and inventiveness, as he continually pushed the boundaries of what was possible within the medium. Aside from his work with Mad, Jaffe's talent extended to comic books, comic strips, and various other projects, garnering him accolades such as the National Cartoonist Society's Rubin Award and induction into the Will Eisner Hall of Fame. In 2016, New York Mayor Bill de Blasio declared March 30th as Al Jaffe Day, highlighting the impact of his work on the city's culture and beyond. Al Jaffe's belief in the power of cartoon art to evoke emotional reactions from readers has left a lasting impression on generations of fans and fellow artists. His dedication to his craft serves as an inspiration to those who follow in his footsteps, and his creations will continue to bring laughter and enjoyment for years to come. As we celebrate the life and legacy of Al Jaffe, we pay tribute to this remarkable artist who has forever shaped the world of humour and cartooning. Tributes to Al Jaffe Pedro la Virgen, a legendary Spanish tenor. The world of opera mourns the loss of legendary Spanish tenor Pedro la Virgen, who passed away at the age of 92. Born in Bujalance, Cordoba, on July 31, 1930, her exceptional talent and dedication to his craft made him one of the most celebrated and revered tenors in the history of opera. La Virgen began his musical journey as a member of the chorus at the Hospital de Hermanos de San Juan de Dios in Cordoba and the parish in Bujalance, where he later emerged as a soloist. He joined the chorus at the Teatro de la Zarzuela and went on to study at the Conservatorio y Arte Escénico en la Escuela Superior de Arte Dramático, where he met his longtime mentor Miguel Barrosa. After receiving rave reviews for his performance in the opera Marina in Zaragoza in 1959, La Virgen's career took off. He was contracted by José Tamayo for the company Lyrica Amadeo Vives and made his operatic debut at the Teatro Bellas Artes in Mexico in Aida, alongside Antonieta Stella and Robert Merrill. This performance opened doors for him at prestigious opera houses such as the Gran Teatro del Liceo, the Wiener Staatsoper, the Royal Opera House, the Teatro alla Scala, and the Metropolitan Opera. La Virgen's extensive repertoire included roles in Tosca, Il Trovatore, Turandot, Otello, Pagliacci, Aida, Carmen, and numerous zarzuelas. He retired at the age of 61 and received numerous awards, such as the Premio Nacional de Teatro, the Medalla de Oro del Círculo de Bellas Artes de Madrid, the Medalla de Oro del Círculo de la Ópera de México, and the Verdi de Oro de Parma. The legacy of Pedro la Virgen will continue to inspire future generations of opera singers, and his contributions to the world of music will never be forgotten. Renowned opera singers such as Javier Camarena and Ramon Vargas have paid tribute to the great tenor, a testament to the lasting impact of his remarkable career. Tributes to Pedro la Virgen Philippe Bouvatier, a cycling talent gone too soon. The cycling community is mourning the loss of Philippe Bouvatier, who passed away at the age of 58 in his hometown of Rouen. The former racer had been weakened by a double stroke that occurred in early December. Despite showing significant progress during his rehabilitation, his condition deteriorated sharply last week, leading to his untimely passing. A talented amateur cyclist, Bouvatier was once hailed as the new Jacques Anquetil. He demonstrated his potential during the 1984 Los Angeles Olympics, 
where he placed sixth in the Team Tricolor time trial. Throughout his career, he achieved victories in stages of the Mediterranean Tour and Circuit de la Sarthe. However, one of the most memorable moments in Bouvatier's career was the fateful mistake during the 1988 Tour de France. On stage 14 between Blagnac and the summit of Houzet Nage, he appeared to have the upper hand over his breakaway partner, Scotsman Robert Miller, but in a twist of fate, he took the wrong road just 200 metres from the finish line, resulting in Italian Massimo Girotto claiming the victory. Despite the setbacks and challenges Bouvetier faced, his dedication to the sport was evident through his determination to recover after his double stroke. He regained his speech and was able to walk again with a cane, a testament to his resilience and fighting spirit. Philippe Bouvatier's untimely passing is a significant loss to the cycling community, but his achievements and contributions to the sport will not be forgotten. As we remember the talent and determination he displayed throughout his life, his legacy will continue to inspire and encourage future generations of cyclists. Tributes to Philippe Bouvatier Richard Eng, A Life of Laughter Hong Kong's entertainment industry is in mourning following the death of veteran actor Richard Eng Yu Hon at the age of 83. He was renowned for his comedic talents and unique sense of humour, leaves behind a legacy of laughter that spanned over four decades. Having starred in over 100 films, Richard Eng made a significant impact on Hong Kong's film industry. He initially rose to fame in the 1970s through television shows like The Hui Brothers, and went on to star in a plethora of successful films such as The Pilferer's Progress, directed by John Woo, and The Pom Pom series. Richard Eng's comedic prowess and ability to connect with audiences made him a household name in Hong Kong. As part of the city's top comedic performers, Eng worked alongside prominent celebrities like martial arts legend Jackie Chan, Sammo Hung Kambo, and the Hui brothers. Despite battling health issues in recent years, he remained passionate about acting, and even appeared in projects by emerging filmmakers for free, demonstrating his commitment to nurturing the next generation of talent. In a 2019 interview, Ung expressed his dedication to his craft, saying, I won't lose interest in filming because of this problem. Filming is the joy of my life. Born and raised in Hong Kong, Richard Ung moved to the United Kingdom at the age of 15 to study dentistry, but later changed his focus to film. Upon returning to Hong Kong in 1970, he began a prolific career in the local television and film industry. He continued to work on international projects throughout the 1990s and 2000s, including the popular Singaporean sitcom Under One Roof and the Hollywood film Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, The Cradle of Life. Richard Eng's final performance was in the film Where the Wind Blows, where he played the lead actress's father. As tributes pour in from fellow actors, directors and fans, it is clear that Ung's infectious humour, kindness and outstanding contributions to the local film industry will be remembered for generations to come. Tributes to Richard Eng James Olsen, celebrating the life of a talented actor. The world of entertainment mourns the loss of versatile actor James Olsen, who passed away at the age of 91 in his Malibu home. With a career spanning four decades, Olsen graced both the stage and screen with his captivating presence and left an indelible mark on the industry. Olsen rose to prominence after his first national exposure in 1956, playing the title role in Craft Theatre's The Life of Mickey Mantle. His breakthrough film role came in 1968 with Rachel Rachel, an Oscar-nominated drama produced and directed by Paul Newman, in which he starred opposite Joanne Woodward. Olsen portrayed a cad who woos and then rejects Woodward's character, showcasing his ability to captivate audiences with his compelling performances. Throughout his career, Olsen was a familiar face on television, appearing in numerous episodic series during the 1990s, such as The Virginian, Medical Center, Columbo, Gunsmoke, Bonanza, The Rookies, The FBI, Marcus Welby, Maryland, Mannix, Kung Fu, Cannon, The Streets of San Francisco, 
Wonder Woman, The Bionic Woman, Battlestar Galactica, Little House on the Prairie, Hawaii 5-0, and his final credit in 1990, Murder, She Wrote. Olsen's film career included notable roles in the 1971 science fiction classic The Andromeda Strain, where he played a surgeon investigating a deadly alien organism, and the 1981 film adaptation of E.L. Doctorow's best-selling novel Ragtime, directed by Milos Forman. In 1982, he portrayed Father Adamski in Amityville 2, The Possession. A graduate of Northwestern University, Olsen served in the U.S. Army before settling in New York to study at Lee Strasberg's Actors Studio. He made his Broadway debut in the short-lived 1955 play The Young and Beautiful and went on to appear in numerous productions, including Archibald MacLeish's groundbreaking avant-garde biblical allegory, J.B., and the ill-fated Breakfast at Tiffany's, which closed before its opening night. James Olsen's enduring legacy in the entertainment industry is a testament to his talent, versatility, and dedication to his craft. As we remember and pay tribute to this accomplished actor, we honour his contributions to both the stage and screen that will continue to inspire and captivate audiences for generations to come. Tributes to James Olsen. Max Crabtree, a pillar of British wrestling. The British wrestling community mourns the loss of Max Crabtree, a former wrestler, promoter and brother of the legendary British wrestler Big Daddy. At the age of 90, Crabtree's passing marks the end of an era for the wrestling industry in the UK. With a career spanning four decades, Crabtree's influence on the sport and his ability to promote and develop wrestlers left a lasting impact. Crabtree played a significant role in the careers of many notable wrestlers, including Dynamite Kid, Davy Boy Smith, William Regal, and George Kidd. His keen eye for talent and skill in booking matches earned him widespread respect in the British wrestling scene. Despite facing criticism for building joint promotions around his brother Big Daddy, leading to accusations of nepotism, Crabtree remained a prominent figure in the industry. WWE Hall of Famer Bret Hart noted in his autobiography that Crabtree would often entice wrestlers with the promise of extra money to perform specific moves. As the brother of Big Daddy and referee and MC Brian Crabtree, Max Crabtree was part of a family legacy in British wrestling. Together, the three brothers laid the foundation for the growth and development of the sport in the UK. Max Crabtree's contributions to British wrestling will not be forgotten, and his impact on the sport will continue to be felt for years to come. Our thoughts and condolences go out to his family and friends during this difficult time. Tributes to Max Crabtree. Shireen El Tahan, a talented voice and presence silenced too soon. The world of Egyptian entertainment mourns the loss of artist and media personality. Shireen El Tahan, who passed away at the age of 47 after a courageous battle with cancer. Her passing has left a void in the hearts of her fans, colleagues, and the entire Egyptian artistic community. Egypt's acting profession syndicate paid tribute to the late artist in a heartfelt post on their official Facebook page. Despite efforts by the United Media Services Company to cover her treatment expenses, she succumbed to the illness, leaving behind a legacy of memorable performances and an indelible impact on those who knew her. The cast and crew of the popular series Ramadan Karim expressed their sorrow at the loss of El Tahan, who portrayed the character Hind in the first season. Her role as the wife of teacher Hinawi, played by actor Mohamed Mahmoud, resonated with audiences and contributed to the series' success. Shireen El Tahan's career began as a presenter on the Nile Variety Channel on Egyptian television after graduating from the Faculty of Commerce at Cairo University. She eventually transitioned to acting, captivating audiences with her performances in various television productions such as Unknown Number, The Seven Commandments, al Rakin, Ramadan Karim, and A Temporary Name. She also appeared in films like My Dearest Friends and 45 Days. Shireen El Tahan's untimely passing is a reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of cherishing the talents that grace our screens and touch our lives. As we pay tribute to her, 
we celebrate her accomplishments and the joy she brought to her fans through her work. Tributes to Shireen El Tahan. Thanks for watching Who Died Today America. If you enjoyed this tribute, please give it a thumbs up and share with friends. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more inspiring stories. Leave a comment below telling us who inspired you the most. See you in the next video.